Today I'm going to review a couple of products from Rock Pals. One is a 100 watt solar panel and what they call the 300 watt powered station. We'll see if the tech has actually now given us a realistic promise of performance for completely off the grid power in an emergency. And we'll find out what the devices can promise coming up. I've been reluctant to jump on the bandwagon on solar power plus battery combination in the past because the amount of electricity generated and stored didn't seem enough for actual realistic use in an emergency, especially for a family. When I saw the Rock Pals 100 watt portable solar panel in the Rock Pals 300 watt power station, I'm finally seeing something practical for portable use. You may still end up needing more than one of these sets depending on your use, but each set is currently around $500 and this gives you power independence to some degree and we will see if that is practical. In this video, I'm going to do some of the math to show you how this can work. Then in another future video, I will actually do some testing to see if the math correlates with the reality. I'm going to try to explain this in real terms and avoid showing you the math. For now, let me show you the products. First, let's look at the solar panel. It's roughly briefcase size, although much thinner. But I caution you, it weighs around 11 pounds. It's like a big laptop covered in fabric. Very strong fabric, but it, but it does not appear to be waterproof. So this is not something you'd leave in a muddy area. You'll have to keep it protected. I think a dry grassy area is fine, but it should be fully exposed to sunlight. For example, it can be on the top of your car roof. The solar panel is completely equipped with all the cables. It has a connector to supply power to the Rock Pals 300 watt power station. It can work with other batteries as well. The cables are standardized, so they can actually work with any battery that accepts solar charging. It comes with a cigarette lighter cable so you can charge it from your car and an AC cable to charge it from your home AC socket. You can just buy the solar panel and begin charging your USB devices. It comes with several USB ports. It also has some connectors to plug into DC devices. There's quite a number of DC power tips that can fit many devices. As a tip, you want to use DC when you can and avoid using AC power bricks if there's a DC option. According to the specs, the smarts in the solar panel will auto-regulate the voltage and amps for the device you're charging so it won't overcharge or damage it. When the solar panel is receiving sunlight, you can see an LED light in the inside to indicate that it's generating power. Later on, I will test how much power is actually generated in various sun conditions. However, you cannot run any AC device from the solar panel, DC only. AC devices need a battery with an inverter, which is supplied in this case by the 300 watt power station product. Now, this Rock Pal solar panel is unique because in price versus performance, it's the best I've found so far. 100 watts for $199 for the panel. You'll find cheaper products with an output around 25 watts, for example, but at a lower voltage. This thing is made to go up to 18 volts, which is what you need if you're going to charge a 12 volt battery. And that's what we're going to be doing later. So it's very important to understand that you can't just look at the output watts. You have to look at the voltage as well to see if it's compatible with a particular battery. Otherwise, you'll waste money and the solar panel will not be completely useful for the long term. And this is what's confusing about the technical specs. Watts are computed by voltage times amps. If you don't know what voltage they're talking about, the watt specs may not be comparable. 
So a conversion of the watts to the desired voltage is important to do first. I'm going to do the computations for you. This solar panel is rated to supply a max voltage of 18 volts at 100 watts or 5.5 amps. That's a good amount of power. Now, if the panel is not getting full sun like on a cloudy day, it will not reach that max power level. I will make sure to actually test it in another video. But from experience, you need to have a voltage close to 14 volts to charge a 12 volt battery quickly. So 18 volts in theory gives it some allowance for a cloudy day. If all you need to do is to power up a few phones and a laptop, you can just plug it directly to the panel and they will run while there's sunlight or the batteries of those devices will be charged. So for that use, you do not need the battery. But if you want to run devices at night, then you will need to pair the solar panel with a battery. The next Rock Pals product I'm going to show you is the 300 watt power station, which sells for approximately $299. Again, based on price for performance, in mid-2019, this is quite a performer. It's not cheap to find a battery giving 300 watts. To translate what this 300 watts mean, it means you can run a device that uses up to 300 watts. The total capacity though of the battery is 280 watt hours. Meaning if you're running a 300 watt device on AC power, it will run out of juice in under an hour. So you have to understand the specs. Watt hours give you the overall capacity and the max power load so this device can handle a load of 300 watts for a total capacity of 280 watts. You can't run a microwave with this, for example, because that uses 1000 watts, even if only for short periods. So this is the maximum amount of wattage that can be consumed at any moment. Heaters, anything with large motors, like washing machines and such, cannot use this battery. But surprisingly, this little battery could run a refrigerator. Now let me show you the device in detail. It comes with built-in LED lights, which are handy in an emergency. Here is the AC inverter socket. This is where you'd plug in your AC devices. There are direct USB ports here. These have a max of 3.1 amps, so they're good for fast charging most electronics that use USB. 3.1 amps is the high end of USB, so that's good. Many only give you two amps. That will charge your phones and tablets quickly. There are also direct 12 volt connections here. You may wonder what you can use that for. In my case, I can use it to directly power my HF ham radio without using a power supply. Perfect for an emergency. Although you can plug in a USB charger into the AC socket, understand that converting the 12 volt battery voltage is inefficient. Only 85% of the battery power can be used on AC. The rest is lost, probably due to heat. While the DC connections are 96% efficient. So it's better to directly charge DC devices using the DC ports. That efficiency rating is important in computations later on because I will reduce the available power to 85% for AC and 96% for DC. At the back of the 300 watt power station, here's where you plug in the solar panel to charge the battery. This other port is for plugging in the power station through your home wall socket for AC charging. Here's a chart showing some possible devices you can run on this battery. These are common AC devices. Remember our available AC power is around 238 watt hours reduced by the efficiency rate. A laptop will use about 50 watts. A 100 watt incandescent light bulb will use 100 watts. A refrigerator, a standard refrigerator uses up between 100 to 200 watts. A smaller LED TV uses about 40 watts. A mini refrigerator runs at 50 watts. LED lights uses 9 to 14 watts, equivalent to about 60 to 100 watts of lighting power if you're comparing it to incandescent. And here's an example of a DC device. 
on DC, the maximum available power is 54 amps at 5 volts DC or 270 watt hours. A phone uses about 1.5 amps per hour or 7.5 watts. Now let's look at the charts again, this time converting the watts to how much time it will give us if we use it full time on the battery as a sole device. To give us a standard, I'm going to include incandescent light bulbs at 100 watts, which will give you 2 and 1 fourth hours approximately. You could charge 5 laptops, you could use the battery for 6 hours if with a smaller LED TV. You can run a refrigerator for about a quarter of a day since it only runs one third of the time. You can run a mini refrigerator for about half day. Again, it only runs one third of the time. And if you have LED lights, one LED light equivalent to 60 watts incandescent can light you up for 26 hours. Now, if you use this for a DC device, you could charge a phone 36 times with one charge. Again, the assumption here is that you're only using one device with the battery. That's not realistic. So I'll try to create some practical combinations here that you can visualize. Let's see what we can realistically use this set of solar panel battery in a real emergency or off-grid, like camping or on a boat. Here's an example for one set of rock pals. You can charge two laptops using up 100 watts and charge four phones using 30 watts and have an LED light for 15 hours from one bulb or you can run three bulbs for about five hours. Now that's quite practical. In the past about the only thing you could do was charge your small devices with these batteries but this gives you a full day use of phones and laptops for a family plus three light bulbs for community use during nighttime, dinner, and before going to bed. Now, if I wanted more amenities like a cold drink, then I need a, another separate set of the solar panel and battery, and I need to add in another solar panel. And that should give me enough power during the summer to run a mini fridge 24 7. Obviously, in the winter climates, you don't need this. So you'll have reserved power. In my prior computation, the 300 watt power station fully charged can only run the mini fridge half of the day. The extra solar panel will accommodate that extra needed power. So if the grid is actually down or you want comfortable camping, having a pair of rock pals, solar and battery will be downright luxurious. You will have to cook without using electricity of course. My conclusion is that this is now a practical solution for every household's emergency preparation. You could store both the battery and the solar panel in storage and bring it out only in an emergency. Or better yet, keep the battery charged using your house power and then bring out the solar panel only if the grid is down. This way you will always have available power. So I did an actual test. I put it out in the sun with a completely discharged battery and it fully charged in about four hours in bright sunlight. So if the sun isn't completely shining, then you have still many hours of sunlight to compensate. So that's pretty good. You're able to run these devices in parallel to double the capacity in a single circuit. So in conclusion, at the current power capacity of the solar panel and battery combo, this is about the minimum level that I would find to be practical for an emergency for a household. Amazing how this has now come down to an affordable level. Because it's solar, this could supply power every day for many years, at least until the lithium ion batteries break down, which I'm going to guess would be around five years. The solar panel could charge for decades, but it would slowly degrade too. In the next video about this power combination, I will actually run it through stress tests to see if the claims are realistic and if the computations I gave here are accurate. Make sure to subscribe to my channel to see the follow-up video.